The headlines from today, just two minutes away, but first, life after near death. U.S. troops who lost limbs in Iraq getting a chance to feel whole again. It's a brief escape, but it can make all the difference, we're told in a Fox report now from Alicia Acuna. If I can do this, I can do anything. The motto of Disabled Sports USA. And uh, for me, skiing was the sport that got me turned on. Kirk yeah, Bauer lost his leg in Vietnam slow. and is now the Thanks executive the director. Up. We want them to realize that there is life after disability. And sports is one of the greatest ways to teach that lesson. So DSUSA invited 30 soldiers who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan and their families to spend a week in Breckenridge, Colorado. All of us are amputees. Amputees who have found freedom on the slopes. After my injury. Keith Deutsch spent a month in Iraq when his convoy was attacked. The tailgate of that vehicle got hit with an RPG. And I was right on the other side of it, so it took off my leg. If just for a day, this event gives some soldiers a chance to leave the wheelchair behind and makes the return a bit easier. Changed my life in every way possible. Um, giving me back the confidence to do everyday things. Great day to be alive. Captain Dave Rosell of the U.S. Army and his men patrolled the Sunni Triangle until his Humvee ran over a landmine. Walking is uncomfortable. Running is not fun. Skiing's absolute freedom. According to the New England Journal of Medicine, advances in battlefield medicine keep more soldiers alive than ever before. Perseverance gets them to the mountain. The American soldier is the most unique individual on this planet. Look at this powder. But then you look at these guys and you think about how they're recovering and how they're getting back to life and not giving up. It's amazing. And that's, that's a true hero. In Breckenridge, Colorado, Alicia Acuna, Fox News. We close tonight with some wounded heroes now making a courageous comeback from the misfortunes of war. CBS's Bob McNamara gives you tonight's Eye on America. She is snow gung-ho. Ready to rock and roll, baby. Only six months after Danielle Green lost her lower left arm to a rocket-propelled grenade in Iraq. This is fun. It's just a lot of wind right now. She is skiing for the first time. When I was able-bodied, you know, I was scared to do this, but now it's just like I'm ready to take on any challenge that comes my way. Go, 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 go! Last May, this was Danielle Green, severely wounded by an insurgent attack in Baghdad being rushed by fellow MPs to a battle zone hospital. And when I found that I, had, that I lost my left hand, I was devastated I was pretty bitter. Because with that left hand, Danielle Green scored more than 1,000 points for the University of Notre Dame women's basketball team. Danielle Green! Yet today, she calls herself lucky. You no, know, that rocket could have hit my chest or something, and I would have been gone, but I was lucky that it hit my arm. One, two, three. Get a boy. Woo! At Breckenridge, Colorado, Green was one of two dozen Iraq War amputees invited to Disabled Sports USA's annual ski week. I'm a Vietnam vet. It is a gathering of 600 that promotes emotional and physical healing from devastating injuries. I can show what I know and help now guys coming back from Iraq. For some of the most recent amputees still dealing with a life-changing disability, part of the therapy of being here is the chance to see that the loss of a limb isn't the loss of a life. They come out there and they see somebody else and they're just going, look, he split down the mountain, and that's enough. Then they know they can do it. They struggle every day with just walking and now they're out here skiing, it's awesome. The last time we saw Dave Rosell, his right foot had been lost to a landmine outside Baghdad. With some difficulty, he was learning to walk on a prosthesis. There you go. Oh, oh. you okay? Woo. Here's some powder. Now, 15 months later, snowboarding down a mountain, in weeks, he will be the first Iraq War amputee to return to the war. Our Constitution is about freedom. To go back is, is showing the, the, the Iraqi people how committed to, to that freedom we are. Dave Rosell and Danielle Green. Uh oh, whoa. So I'm just, just gonna try to conquer everything I can with this disability and that let the disability conquer me. Profiles in courage, finding themselves in what they lost. Yoo-hoo, getting dizzy. In Breckenridge, Colorado, Bob McNamara for Eye on America. The story of some soldiers who are rising above that challenge. They have nothing to prove to anyone. 
but themselves. In Breckenridge, Colorado... All right, ready? Yeah. ...a gathering of quiet heroes, members of the U.S. military whose lives forever changed in an instant on battlefields half a world away. At 24 years old, Melissa Stockwell is a veteran of the war in Iraq. Eight months ago, a roadside bomb in Baghdad stole her leg. Okay. She feared it also stole everything she enjoyed. Nice job. But on just the first day here, yeah, 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 yeah. with her husband and volunteers at her side, this young first lieutenant was again skiing the Rockies. Oh, this is fun. Melissa's husband, Dick, has been at her side all along. He's an Army first lieutenant who was also in Iraq. When she woke up in the field hospital, he was the one who told her she'd lost her leg. When he told me, uh, honestly, I don't really know what I, what I initially thought. I think, uh, I think I was thinking, I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad he's here with me. I'm glad, I'm glad it was me and that all my other soldiers are safe. More than 185 members of the U.S. military have lost legs or arms in the war in Iraq. And yet, when asked about sacrificing, Melissa says it's those still in Iraq she thinks of. I had to spend five weeks over there, and they, they're going to be over there for over a year. So, I mean, who, who's given the bigger sacrifice today? I mean, here, I'm back here. I mean, look where I am. I mean, it's, it's incredible, and they're, they're back there. I mean, wondering if they're going to make it through the next day. You could try pointing yourself a little bit more downhill. 21-year-old Keith Deutsch is a volunteer instructor. There you go. You're riding your edge now, too. Teaching with the compassion of someone who fully understands the challenge. Private First Class Deutsch lost his leg under attack in Baghdad. Okay. His Purple Heart awarded by President Bush. Honor, duty, commitment. Ideals, Keith says, are exemplified not by the wounded, but by those who don't make it home, like his squad leader, Sergeant Mark Lawton. He is with me and with the rest of my unit. And what is that spirit that he gave you? <laughs> Discipline, respect, um, everything you need to be successful. Everything. A young man and the anguish of war. Not unlike another generation, but this time there's a grateful nation. Nobody would know that better than a Vietnam veteran, someone like Kurt Bauer. In military speak, you might say he's the tip of the spear, responsible for much of what's going on here. Kurt, tell me, when you got back from Vietnam, what was it like for you? Well, it really is a world of difference from what we're seeing with the veterans coming back from Iraq now. Uh, Why? Well, attitudinally, uh, you know, people had rejected the war, but they also rejected the soldiers. And now? And now we see that no matter how you feel about the war, everyone wants to help the soldiers, particularly the ones that are coming back with severe injuries. Yeah, how the mother of God on the The camaraderie shared between men and women who never thought about coming home a different person and who say they're finding now they're not that different after all. For today, Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Breckenridge, Colorado. And now back to...